right. What's up, man? Nice to meet you. All right. How you doing? What's going on? Professor Griff, I'm Chuck D. You've been educating people for years on uh, on the on the power, fighting the power. What do you think is the biggest source of power in the world today? The biggest source of power, and I think, you know, Griff could probably attest this, knowledge of self and knowledge of your surroundings. But if you have knowledge of self, but you don't know your surroundings, you kind of like at the beginning of the same old boat again. They, the enemy is always three steps ahead. We're trying to gravitate our people to at least be a step behind because the enemy is treacherous. And they come in all shapes, forms, alien spirits. Right, and, I, and I think we just doing our part through the medium of music, and we just chose hip hop as the medium which to fight that particular battle, that's all. And we knew that, we knew that once we, we was able to do that in hip hop, they would see it as fertile ground to go back into it, right. to use it to flip the people. But you know, that wears off. That wears off when you have that perseverance to keep going on. Not to say that you win the game, but you gotta make sure that people don't lose. Do you have a comment on like the current, some of the current like big acts out there that kind of look like they've sold their soul and they've even admitted it in, in certain interviews? The big acts have never been attached to the people in the first place. That's why you don't see tour, tours. If you did see a tour, you would never see them interact with their public anyway. It's something like it's like a, it's almost like a ghost. And so one thing uh, I think I learned from Griff is that you always got to be aware of ghosting. There's a lot of ghost images where people were believed in ghosts in the sky, the ground, some book. You gotta, you gotta try to get to the physicality of something, even an enemy, and break them down to where they are as a being. They might not be a human being, but they are being, and, they, and their whole goal is to be inside you. The rest of them, one of the things they want to use. Tell them about that recent uh, going overseas, playing right across the way from um, the Rolling Stones. Oh, and then looking at the press the next day and you know. Well we played right in the shadow of the Rolling Stones and many people, this was at Glastonbury, biggest festival in the world. And um, you know, I mean this country got all kinds of games. My, my crew had to go half, half the crew could go because we couldn't get out of the States. We played it, we made an impact. Everywhere else of course they acknowledged it back in the United States. Not that they didn't acknowledge, but they acknowledge everything else except for what we try to put down. I mean, simple things like, don't be a dumb mother a smart ass phone. Simple thing, don't have your phone smarter than you, a simple thing. So if they're looking at that as being, uh, what would you call, um, cultural count, uh, contraband, then it lets you know where we're at as, as, as a society. You know, I mean, the whole thing was, the new world order was the, the to blanket the world in a philosophy yeah, that makes yeah. everybody sheep. Right. How do you think Obama's gonna fare in this? Who? Uh, Obama on his way out. Yeah. <laughs> Obama was on the way out, on the way in. So, <laughs> but it was it was something for those that had some kind of level of consciousness to use that time, yeah. with, if he's in yeah. there, to buy some time before a yeah. real enemy really comes down, or I should say, a thorough enemy that don't give a. F like basically sending people to gas chambers legally. <laughs> you know, Obama was enough of a facade to be able to say, all right, I got my senses. Let me get my cipher together, my surroundings together, not fall into the hype. When he's out of there, then the next one that comes in, the question is, are we ready for the next person that comes in, whether he pretends to be an ally or whether he's a straight out adversary like the the Bush, when, yo, when Bush was in, he was a straight out adversary and told you. Yeah, yeah that was some Bush <laughs> So, if we have to look around at our people. That's one thing we try to do in the music. I mean, look, it's real simple. We want to use our music and culture to unite the human spirit. We believe that culture brings us together as human beings and defies all governments. We feel all government, governments are wicked. So governments like to split people up categorize human beings, divide so they can conquer them. There's people that don't even think that they can see the world because they need permission to see the planet, the planet Earth. A visitor to the planet Earth, right? right? Music allows you to be a visitor to the planet Earth way before the internet. That's why, you know, where we're at, just culturally, just being able to put the good seed in. So a lot of times when they say, well, public enemy is anti this, anti that, we're just anti-ignorant. We've always been about the good seed. 
So somebody has to clearly define themselves as the, the bearer of the bad seed and the bad fruit that go against public enemy. And there hasn't been anybody out there musically or even in a, in a country that has a clear definition for why we're the bad seed and they're the good seed. And all we are, a bunch of musicians just playing on Monica. <laughs> I'm glad it's people that less, have less acknowledgement getting some credit, like my man Professor Griff. And he instituted a lot of things in rap music and hip hop that were unprecedented and still not duplicated to this day. You know, and um, you know, it's good to see people that have worked all these years, whether it's production like Hex Shockley, Gary G. Wiz, the S1Ws, everybody to be acknowledged in it and um, to keep it going on. You know, people want to be appreciated for their effort. Not that everybody was looking for it. We wasn't looking for it. We came, we felt appreciative, we move on. And like I said, if, 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 if we could take that one, if it was a one trophy, and we could break it in 10,000 pieces, you best believe we'd be still handing them out.